Today I'm going to talk to you about our relationship with stress and anxiety. I've specifically picked this talk to try and connect with anybody um, in particular that might be going through the previous exam nerves or stress that might be um, floating around at this time of year. But in fairness, all of us experience stress at some point in our life. And I'm going to talk to you about the relationship between stress and anxiety and how anxiety gives us the symptoms that our body is under too much stress. And I suppose I'm going to talk to you a little bit about some of the tools that you can use. And then this day next week, which is just right before the exams start, if anybody's doing state exams, junior cert, leave insert, um, I want to give you a specific tool, which is tapping, positive tapping, positive EFT. EFT stands for Emotional Freedom Technique. And what we mean by that is we free our bodies of emotions that are not serving us. So if we're feeling anxiety, if we're feeling fear, if we're feeling stress, we can tap through those emotions and we can tap what we want instead. So if you want to have a bit of confidence, you want to have a better memory, you want to have a bit of calm, we can tap those in. So next week, same time, Tuesday at two o'clock, I will be teaching you a tapping routine specifically for those. So today I'm just giving you the heads up that it's going to start next week. Once that video is created, it will be on my YouTube channel as well as my other social media platforms. But you'll always find all of the Gen Talk series on the channel, which is Jenny Cruz on YouTube. And you'll be able to look that up and revisit that. I've put the slant or the focus on people suffering from exam stress, but stress is stress. So it doesn't matter if it's something that's been hanging around for a little while that's causing you stress or anxiety or it's something new that video um will be um and that tapping technique will be um ideal for you as well so let's have a look at stress and how it affects the body i mean first of all i just want to say that the stress releases hormones in our body the two main hormones and there are many more but they're just too long for me to try and pronounce on a talk like today i'd be guaranteed to get them all jumbled up so we'll just stick with the two that we're most familiar with cortisone and um, adrenaline when we suffer from stress and we go into the stress response in our neurological um, state we release cortisone and adrenaline into the body Adrenaline is the one that's released very quickly uh, that allows us to either go into something called fight, flight or freeze response and it affects the way our brain performs, affects the way we process information, hi Kim, and it also um, affects the way we, we process information. We often move, work from a different part of our brain which is the amygdala and that is our stress response, it is our reptile um, part of our brain that has really dealt with you know going on the attack or surviving an attack it's a non-thinking part of our mind so often when we're under extreme immediate stress we don't actually think straight we actually just get into um, survival mode that's the that's the response that we're in and that's known as the stress response there are times when the stress response can be helpful for us and that's when we need to be super sharp focused we don't need our peripheral vision and we need to channel some of that energy. But what I'm talking about today from the point of view of stress is prolonged stress, where the stress is never ending. You know, when you feel like you've ha you're having one of those days or one of them weeks and you're like, oh my God, can I take any more? That's when stress is getting too much and it's overloading us. And when we get into that state, what happens with our mind is that we get stuck in the stress response. So we're in and it doesn't know how to move back into rest and digest rest and digest is usually the state that we're in when we're asleep and also when we're resting so when we can pause during the day maybe if you're lucky enough to meditate or do a mindful activity or do something that gives you a bit of joy where you just go into free flow you know where time passes you by and you're in your kind of happy place. A lot of us go there when we're doing our hobbies or our creative spaces or even something simple like Sudoku or crosswords. But the mind is focused only on the activity and not all the other millions of things that run around in our mind. And when we're stuck in stress response, it's very difficult for us to get back to the rest and digest response. And that's why one of the first symptoms of an overstressed mind 
is sleep. Our sleep becomes disturbed and it's difficult for us to um, get back to that response. Hi Kim, yeah, I'm definitely missing your classes as well. I'm missing my lovely group. Um, but I will be back there soon and she can always catch me online and don't forget we have the Wellbeing Network that will be on tonight. I sent a free link out to your group so if you're looking for a copy of it either um, Stacey or Sheila should have a, a link to it. If you don't and you need a link let me know and I'll send it on to you later. I'll be, I'll be uh, hosting an amazing talker called Roshi and Kyo who will be talking about nutrition and particularly the health of our gut, how to look after our gut and the relationship between our mind and our gut. So that's a little plug for the Wellbeing Network that I was going to do at the end, but sure, here it is, slap bang in the middle. So going back to our stress response, one of the key tools, and I probably for me, I'm biased because I am a breath coach, um, one of the best tools in the toolkit to activate the rest and digest response is breath. And I've spoken many times about breath there's a million videos well maybe that's an exaggeration there's a few videos on my youtube channel about breath but what we really want to do if you just take it as a rule of thumb if you're feeling this stress building is to slow down slow down your breathing so if you think about it the more nervous and agitated and, and fearful we become the faster we breathe so in direct correlation to that if we slow down our breath we also slow down our mind and although we can't see this in our mind, what happens is we don't just slow down the mind, we actually release three gorgeous hormones. Serotonin, which is like the happy sunshine hormone. Oxytocin, which is the love hormone that makes us feel all lovey, loving and lovey. And then we also have uh, dopamine, which is almost like the reward for safety, you know, that we're feeling safe and we're feeling in our comfort zone. They're released when we slow our breathing down, when we take conscious on purpose breaths. But also equal to that, our body sends a message to say we don't need the stress hormones anymore. So it ejects our cortisone and our adrenaline from the body. And that's really important because cortisone in particular actually um, ages the body faster than any other hormone. It speeds up the aging process. So if you want to like live a little bit longer and live healthier for longer, you definitely want to be getting rid of that cortisone in your body. Otherwise, it lingers just in case we need it. And um, so breath is an amazing tool. Of course, tapping is another amazing tool and mindfulness or meditation. And people get really caught up on like, oh, how do I meditate or how do I do mindfulness? Mindfulness is just giving the, your mind a job. It's giving it one area of focus. So instead of thinking of a million things and our to-do lists and what this person said and what you're going to do next, all that kind of chatter that goes on in the mind, we just give the mind a job. And you can give the mind a job to count the breath, to just focus on the breath and count. You can use your five senses as what we call anchors, to just anchor into something. So notice what you can hear, Notice what you can see, notice what you can smell, notice what you can taste, notice what you can touch. That's your five senses. And in that moment, even you can say to yourself, five things I can hear, five things I can see, etc. You know, it's a really powerful way. Anything that brings your focus to your brain, to that immediate focus, gives the brain like a massage, like a rest. It's like a little pause. And that releases a special kind of energy called sattva. And sattva energy is much purer than our normal kind of running around every day to day doing energy that we get recharged when we sleep. So here's the thing to remember. If you want to, um, I suppose, pause and release some stress, you need to build more sattva energy and calm the mind. And how we do that, there's only three ways we can do that. Well, there's, there's not only three ways, there's th the three best ways we can do it is breath, um, mindfulness or meditation and remember breath is meditation so if you can just breathe that you're also you know giving your your mind that 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 that, that benefit of meditation and then the last one and my favorite one of all is joy and what we mean by joy is doing something that fills your soul that just takes you away from all of the mundane to-do lists that we have running around in our mind and time passes um, without us even recognizing it and that is so powerful. And we forget that we were put on this planet to be joyful beings. So go and find joy if you haven't already found it in your life. And what's joyful for you 
can be joyful for doesn't have to be joyful for other people i work with groups for some people it's ironing for some people it's cooking for some people it's crosswords for some people it's gardening you know it could be anything that fills you with joy that your mind gets lost in the action and we get into what we call flow it's called it's known as flow in positive psychology so that's how we alleviate stress. I will be talking a little bit more about it next week from the point of view of like how stress gets into our mind and then I'll be talking, I'll be teaching you a tapping routine that you can use to actually tap out the stress and in the emotion that you want instead of it. Quickly before I finish, because I know I don't want to go too long on, on this talk for it to take too long to load, is the idea of anxiety. Anxiety is the physical manifestation of stress in the body. So in other words, when the mind gets overloaded and we can't take it anymore, we start to physical symptoms in the body that show us that we're actually stressed, you know? So if you're having anxiety, it mightn't be anything that happened today or yesterday, but it could be something that has caused it the trigger for prolonged stress. And you might be stuck in the stress response and being stuck, your body is saying, help. It's waved a little flag to say, we cannot continue like this. Something needs to change. So when we get the physical representation of stress in the body, it comes true in the form of anxiety, where we might get sweaty palms, we might get short breath, we might get sickness in our tummy. Everybody experiences it differently. And the beauty of it is we have the tool for breath to relieve some of the stress, which helps with the anxiety. And I have a specific breathing technique just for anxiety that you can do morning during the day and night time for two to three weeks to help impact that further but for the moment we'll just focus on knowing that even slowing down the breath 10 conscious on purpose breaths every single day helps relieve stress in the body so remember if you just breathe in through the nose for the count of four out through the nose where possible if not through the mouth that will help to relieve the stress that you're feeling in your body right now as well as a million other um, really positive benefits to the body including slowing down the aging process increasing your memory helping with your skin you know i could be here for the rest of the day telling you about the benefits of breath but i will pause on that moment so before i go quick reminder the well-being network is on 31st of may which is tonight if you're listening to this video live Starts at 7.30, finishes at 8.30 and the last half hour, 8.30 to 9 is a question and answers where you can ask Roshin anything you want about your gut and she'll do her best to answer questions individually but she'll also talk to you about how she may be able to help you in the future and I will be back here next Tuesday, same time, 2 o'clock and I will be talking a little bit further about stress and anxiety. I'm going to mention the breath for specifically for anxiety and like the, the 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 solution to it and i'm also going to teach the round of tapping for you to follow so if you don't catch me later on in the wellbeing network i look forward to catching you next week at gen talks and i hope you enjoyed today and thank you so much for joining me as always have a wonderful day and i'll speak to you all very soon thank you